any citations. So publishing a high quality paper in scientific journal is only halfway towards receiving citation in the future. The rest of the journey is dependent upon how you are disseminating your research paper. So what here I am trying to say is, it is not only about publishing your research article, but here it is very much important to measure the impact of your scientific publications. And that is why these are some of the reasons why there is a need to measure the impact of scientific publications. Because when this concept of journal was evolved, at that time, peer review process is the only criteria through which you can check whether any journal is a qualitative journal or not. But nowadays, as I just mentioned, that there are more than 246,000 journals are available. And it is very, very difficult to find a good quality expert in different domain. So that is why most of the journals, they are writing that they are following the peer review process but they are not having a good subject expert in their team. That is why you can observe that some of very low rated articles they publish in some high quality research journals and some very quality articles they got rejected. The reason is who are the expert who have evaluated your research paper. So that is why earlier the peer review was the only criteria, but since there are huge number of journals nowadays available. Peer review is not only criteria through which you can check whether any journal is a qualitative journal or not. Right. So that is why the concept of research metrics evolved. And what is research metrics? So these research metrics is the quantitative analysis of scientific and scholarly research output and its impact. For example, you, if you wanted to measure the quality of any scientific articles, first thing you can check is how many times that paper has been cited. What is the edge index of that particular author? What is the overall citation impact of any particular institutions? So these research metrics or research data analytics, they help in terms of measuring the impact of scientific journals at three different levels journal level, author level, and institutional level. So these are some of the reasons why there is a need to measure the impact of your research using research data analytics, because to support application for grant funding, whenever you are applying for any funding agency to receive a grant, you also have to submit the biodata or the research contribution of the principal investigator where you have to mention how many number of articles they have published, what is the total citation, what is the impact factor of the journal, what is the cumulative impact factor of that particular journal, right? So all these things are required. That is why it is very important to measure the scientific output of your research publications before applying for any grant to support application for promotion, right? Even if you are in your university or any higher academic institutions, if you are applying for your promotion, even in the UGC guidelines, they have, they have clearly mentioned that how much point you can get if you publish your research paper in a quality journal. And if that particular journal is having impact factor between 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, you can get additional points for your research papers, right? So that is why these research metrics, they are very much helpful in terms of measuring the impact of scientific research. So whenever you are applying for promotion or any recruitment position, open position, then you will definitely have some advantage by a researcher to maintain their own research profile, right? So it is very much important nowadays that if you are a good researcher, then you can create your profile in different academic professional networking website where you can just show the research community that these numbers of papers you have published, this is the H index. These are the total number of citations of your research paper and in department and faculty review and national assessment criteria. So these are some of the reasons why research metrics, they are, these are very much helpful in terms of measuring the impact of scientific publications. Now, there is a one field which is called scientometrics. And this field is specifically if you wanted to measure the impact of scientific publications. And let me tell you, if your institution is having access of Scopus and Web of Science, you can even publish 
a very good quality research paper and that paper you can publish in topmost journals if you know about this particular area and if you are having access of scopus and you and you know about what is scintometrics how to apply these scintometrics in terms of doing some sort of studies then you can publish a quality research paper while sitting at your home only right so scintometric is the measurement of scientific output and the impact of scientific findings so modern scintometrics is mostly based on the work of eugene garfield who was the father of giving the concept of impact factor and founder of scientific science scientific index science citation index and the institute of scientific information which is heavily used for scintometric analysis so under the scintometrics these are the different four level matrix or research data analytics which you can use not only in terms of measuring the impact of scientific publication but also for publishing a quality research paper in any particular area like for example if you are working in the area of robotics so while applying the scintometric study you can identify who are the top institutions around the world who are doing good in terms of publishing research and robotics who are the top 10 authors in the world what are the preferred journals what are the top 10 journals where the researchers across the world they are publishing their research paper in the area of robotics what is the impact like you can also compare india with different countries country where india is standing as far as robotic research is concerned you can compare your research with any other country like china you can compare the indian institutions with chinese institutions which are doing the similar kind of study so all sort of permutation combination you can apply while using these research data analytics while using this research matrix and you can publish very good quality research paper let me tell you even i have published more than seven or eight of papers which is based on scintometrics and all these papers they are published in very good journals right so when we talk about the research matrix basically there are four level matrix journal matrix author matrix article matrix and alt matrix right so journal level matrix like impact factor which helps track citation pattern within journal and determine which journal are highly cited author matrix which measure the impact of productivity of any researcher article matrix even you can also have a track of on your article like there are many databases there are many journals they are providing article level matrix like how many papers how many persons they have viewed your research paper how many researchers they have downloaded your research paper how many researchers they have cited your research paper so all such all such type of data you can get while using the article level matrix and fourth one is alt matrix again it is very new concept but it is gaining momentum in the academic world and what is basically alt matrix like if you wanted to measure the impact of your research on social media like how many persons they have tweeted your research paper how many persons they have shared your research paper using mandalay or facebook or any social networking site all such of such type of data you can get while using the concept of alt matrix now let's discuss these matrix one by one so when we talk about the journal level matrix there are different type of matrix we are having impact factor h5 index immediacy index cymego journal rank and cite score now i will ask from the participant like if anyone from you if you can just tell me like what is your familiarity about all these matrix anyone from you anyone if you just wanted to give your views about how much familiar you are with all these matrix
Okay, there is no response, so I will continue with my presentation. Okay, so let's discuss about impact factor. Amit sir, I am audible, na? And the PPT is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what is basically impact factor? So this is one of the you can say oldest and the main criteria to evaluate the performance of any journal. And if you wanted to know about the history of impact factor, the concept was given in the year 1960 by Sir Eugene Garfield, and this metric is basically to evaluate or to rank any journal in any field. Now, how to cal calculate impact factor of any journal? Like, for example, if you wanted to calculate impact factor of any journal for the year 2017, so what you have to do is you have to take two-year windows, and this two-year windows for two different purposes. Like, how many papers that journals now, how many research articles that particular journal has published in the year 2015 and 16. and how many citations all the articles published in 2015 they have received and how many art citations all the articles published in 2016 they have received so when you combine total number of citations received in 2017 to the item published in 2015 and 16 divided by number of articles published in that particular journal so whatever will be the number that will be the impact factor of that particular journal so this is the simplest calculation of impact factor and what is five year impact factor so here instead of taking the two year window you can take the five year window and whenever you are applying for any promotion or you know for any funding agency sometime they also ask what is the impact factor of the journal in which you have published your research paper and what is cumulative or five year impact factor so this is how you can calculate the impact factor and five year impact factor and let me tell you there is only one source in the world which can give you the authentic information about impact factor or five year impact factor the name of the source is journal citation report which is published by clarivate analytics earlier it was known as web of science right because nowadays there are lots of predatory journals are available in india so sometime just to attract or just to misguide the young researcher they write that our journal is having impact factor of 5 or 20 or 30 right so don't rely on what they are claiming so you can always double check whether that particular journal is listed in journal citation report or not and what is the impact factor in jcr but again jcr it's a commercial product institution has to subscribe just to have the information about the impact factor of different journals but nowadays many researchers what they are doing if their institution is having access of jcr they are downloading the excel file and they are making available through their social media account ethically this is not right but researchers they are doing and their purpose is just to help other researchers if they wanted to have access of journal citation report so if you simply google jcr 2020 you will find you know any website from where you can download the complete excel file where you can have the information about the impact factor and five year impact factor now cite score is again a criteria which is developed by scopus and uh -huh. uh, yeah I have one doubt. Uh, previous slide. Previous slide. Yeah, this one. Now there may be certain journals which may be of not of that much quality. So if their number of citable items are low, hmm. so so naturally their general impact factor will be more. Yes. Rather, it should be. the the more the citable the good impact factor should be good so, so actually let's... yeah so actually the impact factors totally depend upon the citations all the articles they have received during the last 2 years 
So suppose if there is any new journal, and okay, for that particular citable items, okay, okay, yeah, it's a citation for the citable items, okay, okay. yes, yes, yes. I, I thought in uh, like number of publish publications and then citable, okay. No, no, sir. It's about the citation and citable items. Right, right, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, now talking about the site score, again, it is a matrix which is developed by Scopus. And what they are doing, they are taking three year window. And how the site score is different from impact factor because impact factor only calculate the citation of research article. Like, for example, if Punjab University is publishing a research journal that is indexed by the Clarivate Analytics or Web of Science. And in that particular journal, they are publishing three book reviews, two commentaries, and five research papers. So if your book review has received, like for example, 10 or 15 citations, even your commentary is received the citation. So what Clarivate Analytics they are doing while calculating the journal site uh, impact factor of that particular journal, they are only taking into the account the citations of research paper only. Other than research article, all such type of document they are eliminating. But in site score, what they are doing, they are taking all sort of documents, all type of different publications and their number of citations. Right. So this is the basic difference between the impact factor and the site score. And if your institution is having access of Scopus, you can have the site score of any journal and that you can get free of cost if your institution is subscribing to the Scopus database. Like for example, I'm not sure whether it is visible or not, but you can see the site score of advanced science journal is 13.60. So this is how the Scopus, they are calculating the site score of any particular journal. Now, H5 index, again, it's a basically a metric which is developed by Google. And what they are doing, they are calculating a journal over a period of five years. So if any journal is having H5 of 10 means that during the past five years, a journal has published at least 10 articles, which were each cited at least 10 times. So you're, here you can see the nature is having H5 index of three, six, eight. Right. So this is how you can calculate the H5 index and it is being provided free of cost by the Google. So H5 of 10 means that during the past five years, a journal has published 10 articles which were each time cited at least 10 times. Means so far Nature might have published thousands of articles, but there are 368 articles which have cited at least 368 times during the past five years. So this is the metric which is called H5 index. MVDLC index is very similar to impact factor, but the difference is while calculating the impact factor, they are taking a window of two years. But MVDLC index gives you all the information about the citations, and the total number of articles published in that particular journal after one year. So if you immediately wanted to know, like for example, if I have published my research paper in any Scopus index database uh, journal in 2020, so that journal or my article will have the information of that particular journal after two years if you wanted to calculate the impact factor. But in 2000, if, but I wanted to know the impact factor of that particular journal in 2021, in that case, immediacy index will help me. So the main difference is how much window you are taking for calculating all sort of impact factor. Edge index is basically author level matrix and it is basically used to know the performance of any particular author. Like for example, you can see from this screenshot that we have one professor at Department of Physics and so far he has published more than 
I think 1400 research paper in Scopus and Tech journals. So if you wanted to know the H index of Professor Vipin Bhatnagar, it is 105. That means out of his total research publications, there are at least 105 papers which have cited at least 105 times. That means, for example, agar is professor ne 1200 research paper publish kiye, or unki total citation, let's say 70,000 hai. So, 1200 research paper me se, 105 essay research paper the, jo ki at least 105 times cite hue. And if you wanted to calculate the impact factor, that is Scopus will all automatically do. You don't have to collect the data from anywhere because H, Scopus is providing H index and it is being calculated automatically because once you publish your research paper, Scopus will create your research profile or your author profile. And whenever you second time, you will publish your research paper in any Scopus index journal, they will add your second paper with your research profile. So once you will publish all your research paper, then the Scopus will give you the data of H index. And if you wanted to calculate the H index, what you have to do is you just arrange all your research paper according to decreasing citation number. So you can put, you know, the top cited paper on the first ring, then the second paper, then the third paper. Or then you see that wherever you have number of citations, your number of publications ke match kar jata hai. that is basically H index. Microsoft Academic, it is also providing H index of different authors and you can also create your profile there. No doubt like Microsoft Academic, they are also creating the author profile automatically. But suppose if some paper is missing from your profile, you can create your login and you can add your research paper. I10 index is a basically a matrix which is developed by Google. And if you have created your research scholar profile, where you have indexed all your open access research paper in your Scopus, uh, in your Google Scholar profile, then it will tell you the I10 index. Like for example, this is my Google Scholar profile. So so far, I have published 20 or 23rd paper which are available in open access platform, and the total number of citations is 176. I am having H index of eight. Like there are at least eight paper which have cited at least eight times. And I am having I10 index of six means out of my total paper, there are six paper which have cited at least 10 times. So this is how this I10 index is working. Another index or research data analytics tool is called G index because again, there is a shortcoming in H index. So just to overcome the shortcoming, there is another index which is called G index. And this is how the G index is basically calculated, right? Okay. Now, as I just mentioned to you that there is a new concept through which you can measure the impact of your scientific publication over the social media. So there is a one website, it's called Dimensions. So if you just wanted to know the impact of your research paper on social media, simply you enter the title of your research paper and it will show all sort, sort of metrics, like 77 people, they have downloaded your research paper using Mendeley. 77 people, they have tweeted your research paper. 10 persons, they have shared your research article on their Facebook page. And this is how, like whatever social networking sites are available, and if anyone have used your research paper in any of the social media platform, with the help of this data analytics, which is called Ultimatrix, you will know the impact of your research paper on social media. Right. And when we talk about the article level matrix, there is very well known journal in the field of medical science. It's it. The name of the journal is PLOS One. Right. Whenever or once you publish your research paper in PLOS One, it will start giving you all sites of data related to your article, like how many papers they have viewed your research paper, how many persons they have saved your research paper or downloaded your research paper, 
how many persons they have shared the link of your research paper and how many citations you have received of your research paper so when we do such type of anal analytics at article level that is called article level matrix and plus one is a very good example about knowing the impact of your research article in the academic world how there are various databases are available which basically helps you in terms of knowing the citation search index site score and many more indexes whatever i have explained to you and these are called scopus google scholar inspect base acm IEEE, Web of Science, Medline, Oyster, Popline, Embase, PubMed. So, out of the total bibliographical database, some databases they are in the open access category, and some of are it belongs to the commercial category. And when we talk about the citation databases, these are Web of Science, Scopus, and the Google Scholar. Right. And when we talk about the author identifier, Scopus ID is a unique ID which is created by Scopus. And in this ID, what Scopus is doing, they are bringing together all your research paper at a single page so that you can know how many papers you have published and what is the impact of your research paper. Another author identifier, which is very important for the faculty and the research scholar, it's called org id so it is very much necessary for every research scholar and the faculty to create their org id account it is now considered as the aadhar card of the researcher most of the citation databases they are fetching the publication data using your org id now for example if you are publishing your research paper under different name sometime in one of my research paper i am writing neeraj kumar singh and another paper if i am writing n k singh or in some other paper if i am writing n singh so there are chances that is corpus will create three different profile of the single author and then all your publications and your research metrics it will be scattered but if you are maintaining your org id account so there will be no chance where this corpus they can create different id for the same author so it is very much necessary for every researcher to maintain their org id so that all these citation and bibliographical data database they will reflect the correct information related to your scientific paper and the citation researcher id is another unique data unique identity which is basically provided by web of science and now it is called as publons right so these are some of the benefits if you are creating your researcher id and if you know the recently the stanford university they have conducted a study of top 2% of scientists and they have selected the top 2% of scientists based on their contributions which are reflected in the scopus database right so you just imagine how much important this database is even various ranking agencies us ranking times higher education ranking whenever they have to rank any institutions they are collecting the data from scopus so it is very necessary for the faculty and the institution to publish their research paper which are indexed by these citation databases so this is the google scholar profile which you can also create so that all your works group together in a google scholar and enables you to track citation of your work so if you are creating your google scholar account you can check all such type of metrics which is provided by the google scholar free of cost now this is the first part of my presentation so if any participant if you are having any query related to this portion or this part of my presentation you can ask me or what i can do is i will complete my presentation first and at the end we can take some of the queries if you are having any right sir okay. okay now talking about 
another very important concept that is called plagiarism so different authors different institutions they have defined plagiarism in their own way but one of the simplest definition about the plagiarism which i have taken from merriam webster online dictionaries it says plagiarism means the practice of taking someone else's work or idea and passing them as one's own without crediting the source that means if you are copying anything from some other sources and if you are presenting that this is your original work and you are not giving citation to all those research paper which you have referred while writing your research paper that is basically called a plagiarism and this word is basically derived from a latin word plagiarist which means kidnapper so whenever you are borrowing any idea any text any graph any images first and most important thing which you have to do is you have to cite each and every source which you have referred while writing your research paper and when we talk about the different type of plagiarism generally there are seven or eight type of plagiarism right and self plagiarism is again a very a serious sort of offense which unknowingly researchers and the faculty members they are doing so what is self plagiarism means once you publish your research paper with any publisher then your publications will become uh, when you your publish uh, your research paper basically is a copyright material which is published by that particular publisher so whenever if you wanted to borrow something from your own paper and that paper you have published with some publisher that case also you have to give citation of your previous paper and you can't take the sentence or the paragraph as it is even it is your own publication right so this is again a very serious offense and you can see like based on the severity global plagiarism it is considered as a most severe form of plagiarism right so i'm not going to discuss in detail about these different type of plagiarism because i have to complete my presentation within a time so citation what is citation is citation is whenever you are referring to any research paper or any research articles or anything in that case you have to tell your reader that these are the sources which i have referred while writing my research paper and these are some of the reasons why there is a need to give citation and you are you will be appreciated more if you are citing the sources properly because sometime the reader of your paper they are more interested in reading the original paper rather than your research so if you are giving proper bibliographical details they can directly go to that particular research paper and they can read the original article and citation is very much required just to avoid the plagiarism so there are different citation styles are available like apa mla chicago and these citation styles are basically rules or the instructions about how to cite any particular source like for example if you are taking something from the newspaper article in that case how to give citation of the newspaper article if you are borrowing something from the book chapter in that case how to give citation to that particular book chapter so all sort of rules these are called as a citation style right and then you can ask me a question like is there any need to cite each and everything if we are taking from some other sources the answer is no no because there is a concept of common knowledge and under the common knowledge whatever information that is now a factual information or very famous quote or any sort of information which you can find in number of sources that will come under under the category of common knowledge for example if you are writing that pandit jawaharlal nehru was the first prime minister of india it's a well known fact it's a common knowledge because the same information you can find in multiple sources so in such cases there is no need to give citation now again there is a concept of paraphrasing and what is basically a paraphrasing paraphrasing when you are writing something in your own word now because being a researcher scholar being a researcher and the faculty member we all know 
that for any faculty or the research scholar it is very difficult to write all the research paper purely or entirely is an is in his or own words and in case of phd thesis where there are more than 150 pages or 200 pages nobody can write each and everything uniquely or that is something his own but what you can do is even if you wanted to write something which is already published then you can take help of paraphrasing so paraphrasing means putting original passage of text in your own words without changing its meaning so this is the way best example from which you can understand ki how to do paraphrasing of the original article and these are some of the paraphrasing tools are available which are very much helpful for the researcher if you wanted to rewrite something in your own words these are called quillboard paraphrasing tool.com and spinboard.com these are some of the things to which you can prevent the plagiarism like first thing is provide proper references whenever is required when whenever you are doing paraphrasing make sure that you are not changing the meaning of that particular paragraph and whenever you are quoting whenever you are summarizing whenever you are paraphrasing always give in text citation to all these sources and even for references even you have to provide references if you are using photographs diagrams pictures graphs and maps in your research paper for example whatever images you are searching on google they are under creative commons licenses so you should be very much careful about knowing about what is creative commons license and if any images covered under the, such license in that case you have to give citation to the original author these are some of the initiatives mhrd has taken and uh, also this is about the 2018 plagiarism policy so it says that if you are writing thesis if you are publishing research paper or writing chapter and books full fledged book or dissertation you have to necessarily check your research paper before publication to any anti plagiarism software and depending upon the level first thing the ugc has categorized the level of plagiarism hello yes sir okay so in this regulation ugc has quantified the plagiarism into four level level 0 is where similarity is about 10% level 1 where the similarity is about 10 to 40% level 2 where the similarity is about 40 to 60% and level 3 is where similarity is above 60% and why they have quantified the levels because depending upon the levels there are penalties for both researcher and the faculty member so this complete guidelines are available on the ugc website so if you wanted to know more about this guidelines you can visit to the ugc website and one more thing mhrd has taken the initiative is provided the free of cost access of urukon anti plagiarism software and this program was launched by honorable hrd minister in the year 2019 under its mission shoz shuddhi where they have selected this swedish software the name of software is urukon where they are providing free access to different institutions So right now more than 1000 institutions they are using this software and if you wanted to know like in your state which are the universities which are having access of this software you can get the details from mhrd website what is urkund is basically a text matching software so whenever you are checking your research paper and if your research paper you have copied from internet or any published material or any student assignment the software will immediately tell you what is the level of similarity of your research paper and it is again very good software which is used worldwide by many institution and the publishers for checking the similarities so when we talk about the free tools there are some free tools are also available and for using such tools there is no need to pay a single penny and you can check your research paper 
these are copy leaks plagiarism detector there are many softwares are available like plag scan plagiarism checker dupli checker paper rater plagiarism plagium copy leaks plag tracker these are some of the free anti plagiarism tools which researchers they can use if you wanted to check the similarity of your research paper and there is a one website it's called society for scientific values which are giving all sort of details about the cases of misconduct investigated by scientific of society and due to this plagiarism issue, issue some of the vice chancellors they have to resign from the post even one mhrd minister uh, hrd minister of west bengal he has to resign from his post because of the serious issue of plagiarism so plagiarism is a serious academic offense and it has serious personal and professional consequences so we should be very much careful while taking something which is already published and whenever you are using such type of materials you have to give citations to all such research paper which you have referred now quickly let me give you a uh, overview of urkund software so that you can have a more clarity about the software and you can know how the software basically works so when you logged into this particular system once you are having login id and password then what you have to do is simply just click on this button upload the file you select the file which you wanted to upload and just select the analysis address type the title of your research paper and click on upload so once you will click on upload your paper will be submitted to the urkund database and after few minutes or after some times your paper will be compared with the urkund database and depending upon the similarity like for example this paper is having similarity of 38% when you click on here the report will be opened in a new window and from here you can check like for example here it will give you page wise views like ninth page is totally plagiarized eighth page is having three paragraph which are totally similar and fourth page or one first page there is a no similarity and when you click on this matching text it will give you a window a comparison window like this is your written document and this is what urkund has found similar so through this tab you can compare your document with the original document and you can check how much similarity it is showing so depending upon your research you can modify your research paper and again upload in urkund database so, so that the similarity will reduce to below 10% because 38% is not acceptable in any university so you have to reduce your plagiarism level below 10% right so once you will done all the modifications then you can again submit your research paper and then once the report will be below 10% then the same you, you can publish or you can submit your department when you click on sources it will give you a list of all the sources from where it is showing the similarity now sometime what is happening like when we are doing our phd so before submitting our thesis we publish our three or research four research paper so once you will submit your thesis for plagiarism check it will show similarity with your own paper like for example if this is my paper which i have published from my phd work and this is paper is showing 11% similarity so what if i have to do is i have to give citation to this paper in my phd thesis and with the consultation with the supervisor you can exclude this paper so once you will exclude this paper then you can see that there is a change of the similarity earlier it was showing 36% now it is having 30% you can also exclude some sources right and once you are done with all sort of things then you can download this paper so once you will download the report then this will look like 
here. So all the information you can find on the first page, and here it will show the level of similarity. Right. So this is how this software basically works in terms of checking the similarity. Right. So I think it's 11 already. So I also wanted to have five or ten minutes for the discussion. So that's it from my side. But still, if you are having any query, if you wanted to ask me anything, you are most welcome. Thank you very much for listening to me.